Hello everyone, it's AQWMLAZ91 here for my final video of 2023 where it is going to be the games I bought video throughout December 2023. Where I bought a couple of games, well a fair amount of games throughout all 2023 and I'm also going to give my thoughts on on what I also had for Christmas as well. So it's going to be a pretty quick um, video where I show off the games I bought this uh, this, 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 this December 2023 and also give out my New Year's resolution so I'm going to be starting out with some of the games I picked out for the PS4, Xbox, DS and the Game Boy Advance as well as also show off a new accessory that I bought and then eventually I'll get down to the Christmas presents that I bought. Alright, so let's let's not delay this. So I want this done as quickly as I possibly can. So then let's start off with on the PlayStation 4. I picked out. <laughs> Alright, first game is Call of Duty Ghosts. I had to rebuy this game because there was something wrong with one of the there was something wrong with the disc I picked up many years ago where I didn't fairly check it. But the disc was reading fine for the single player, but the disc was work not was not working mo properly for the multiplayer. So I had to change and swap it out for a clean one, and and this one works. Yeah, Call of Duty Ghosts a very seriously underwhelming Call of Duty game. Releasing after, you know, the Mon the original Modern Warfare trilogy. Infinity War looked like it they could have done something with this one. The new Extinction Mode? Is that what it's called? Is it the new Extinction Mode? Huh. Oh, all it's showing is the um, squads. The new multiplayer squads mode and an extraction mode. And I think that's one of the, uh, the new modes for this game. That's introduced to this game. Um, looks kind of fine. But the single player was just very poor. And the story was just bad. Yeah, with well, these ghosts are supposed to be like this, um, this special forces unit. That's works silently and as convertedly um, in a sense that they would go in and get out never to be seen but the, whereas the first thing they do in they got they broke they break into a stadium in the stadium but just blow shit up just a very poorly poorly put together story and this game was really going to be the next generation Call of Duty game that was going to take full advantage of the new PlayStation 4 Xbox One hardware and yet it was released for the PS3 and Xbox 360 consoles and yeah it was just it wasn't a very good game all right now next game we have the House of the Dead remake. I like 
This is a remake of a light gun shoot 'em up that was released in arcades in um, 1997 worldwide before being only ported to the PC and the Sega Saturn. Ever since the release of the Nintendo Wii and the PlayStation 3's move, and when Sega released the House of the Dead 2 and 3 Return on the Wii and also the House of the Dead 3 and 4 games on the PlayStation 3 and also House of the Dead Overkill on both the Wii and the PlayStation 3. It made us wonder why they didn't give us the same treatment with this for, with the first one. It's like you couldn't ignore you can't ignore the first House of the Dead game, you gotta put it on modern consoles. It's like, what the hell? But alas, we finally got, we did finally get some form of treatment with the first House of the Dead game. You know, generations later. You know, when we're into the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series consoles. And the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One are on their final legs. But yeah, I saw the this. I always wanted to um wanted to get this. And yeah, I, I did finally get my cop copy of this for the PlayStation 4. And it has got the PlayStation 5 version upgrade. And yeah, it's our yeah, it's not a good remake. It's not a good remake. But far from what being one of the worst or rem worst off remakes. Like for the PC it's alright considering um it's has the Sindon like gun um treatment. Whereas on the PlayStation 4 and also the PlayStation 5, you can play this with a PlayStation Move handset. But the camera placement, you have to fiddle around with it. Like, I'll probably need to fiddle around with the camera, with the PlayStation camera settings to um, get to my liking. Speaking of which, let me bring that on screen right now. Here it is. Here is the PlayStation 4 camera. This is what I got with my PlayStation um, 4. This is what I got um, with this game. To be exact. I wanted to buy this camera and this game and this game so I could use my PlayStation Move light gun. So, on the screen. Like, here it is. Here's my PlayStation Move gun. This is one of two I have. I have the big one as well. But I'll just show this one. So, yeah. I wanted to play the House of the Dead remake with this moon control. With, with this setup. You know, like like how in, it was in the arcades, where you play this with a light gun controller. But the move setup with this is kind of a little bit off. Like I don't, I'm not really a huge fan of the new. Like I'm not really a big fan of the sensitivity setup and the trying to. Implement motion control setup for the con for the controller. Like I'll need to play around with the PlayStation camera setup to try and get the move um, control to respond to how I would like it. Because it seems like I need to put the PlayStation move somewhere above upwards, like this. For the um for the crosshair to come up on the, for the cursor to come up on the screen. 
In which by then, um, the zombie would have would have lashed itself on the screen onto me and damaged me. But alas, it's got everything you want for a House of the Dead game. Bad voice acting, bad storyline. Just nowhere near is on the on the same so bad voice acting as the House of the Dead 2. To protect the life cycle. Yeah, not on that level, but it's what you would expect out of a out of a House of the Dead game. Just truly bad writing and voice acting. Which has made these House of the Dead games so well known for. Still, it's it's worth getting a platinum for. And when I get a PS5 um, in the next in next year, I'll be able to get the um, platinum trophy for the PS5 version. So you wait, let me just put my my good shelf aside. All right, next up. We have Final Fantasy 10 and 10 2 Remaster. This is an HD remaster of Final Fantasy 10, the last good Final Fantasy game. Alongside 10 2, which was the start of the Final Fantasy franchise's downfall. I remember playing Final Fantasy 10, having good memories of it. Although it's spear grade, while it was a good, good idea, great idea for the time, it does have some intricate issues, especially if you want to go up against the um, the optional bosses that are just so insanely overpowered. But at least you do get um, some kind of. overpowered um, monster to help you in the form of Yujimbo which you can just pay him a ton of money and you'll get through every single boss including the the OP Dark Aeons and Penance boss encounters like if you just want to break the game if the game is kicking your ass if the bosses are kicking your ass you can use your Jimbo to break the game in half. Which is a good thing. Now I take it that way. Now then, we got some... Xbox games now. <sighs> now I'm gonna take the first one and shove them all on here because we have Man of Valor, a shoot, a Vietnam War game, a Vietnam War game. I was released for the Xbox. I can't get this game to work on my Xbox 360, but this but this one looks pretty decent enough. Then we got the next one, which I also have, which I have on the GameCube. I decided, you know, I'll get, I'll spend some money on the Xbox version. Because why not? Time Splitters Future Perfect. An excellent game in the Time Splitters series. You're playing as Cortex and you're fighting alongside um, other characters. It's a truly solid game. You went bad in the Time Splitters too. It's a truly fantastic first person shooter. Truly one I recommend getting in getting. If you've got an original OG Xbox or if you've got a Nintendo GameCube or a Nintendo Wii or a P or working PS2. 
Shame it doesn't work on the Xbox 360. Much like also, the suffering ties that bind. A game where you're playing as a prisoner who's thrown in prison over a crime that he didn't commit. And and this guy and the guy that you're playing as as a dark monster living inside in inside him who's driving him insane. There's there's multiple storyline there's multiple paths. There's like two different endings, I think, depending on if you spare the people or you kill or you kill the innocent people. And this game here is a follow-up to that game. I wish I could say more about it, but I can't get this game to work on my Xbox 360. The game doesn't work on the 360. It's not they didn't design it to be compatible on the Xbox 360, which is a shame because the first um, The Suffering game works on the Xbox 360, but not this one. Which is just a crime. That's just a crime in my opinion. Come on. If you get the first Suffering to work on the Xbox 360, why not? Why not the second one? Alright, here's the next one. And this is a very memorable one for a lot of people. Metal of Honor Frontline. I actually have this game on my ex on my PlayStation 3. I have um, the Medal of Honor um, limit to 2010 uh, limited edition that actually included um, Metal of Honor Frontline as a digital download game. That was on disc for you for you to play. Like it was it was a cool addition to the to that Metal of Honor game. So I'm gonna go get it very I'm gonna go get it very very quick. Alright, here it is. There's the Metal of Honor 2010 limited edition box. See there it is. It's got includes Metal of Honor Frontline. That you can play on the PlayStation 3. If you have the limited edition, you can get a um, the opportunity to play an HD version of Metal of the Frontline, which is a great way of being able to play it on on a modern console. But here I've got the physical version of this game. But the Xbox, it's got fights that take place in World War Two. And the single player is really, really solid, especially, especially the first mission where you're storming the beach, where you storm the beach of Normandy, which is absolutely incredible stuff. Which I think it's actually still one of the better, one of the best ways to introduce the game. And so yeah, truly amazing um, Metal Warner game, and I highly recommend it. Yeah, there, here we go. I've just put Metal of Honor 2010 back on the shelf. So now we got one more game for the Xbox to talk about, and it is The Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind, and I got the Game of the Year edition. I think I remember this game when um, back in school, and um, we had a couple, we had some. We had an OG Xbox console, and some of the students picked out a couple of games, and this was one of them. And uh, yeah, I'm sure on the PC it was fine back in the day, but on the Xbox, it's a very clunky version to play. Like the combat is very jank. The magic spells. Often do not work as it's supposed to. Yeah, and you gotta level, you gotta level up spells, level up your casting spells, whatever or something, in order to make spells come out more frequently. And 
It's just an absolute janky game. For how for how awkward the combat can be, and it suffers from some serious hit detection issues, where it may look like your attacks are hitting them, but your attacks just either straight, either outright passes through them, or or you're just not doing any damage, or you're just not accurate, or your hit accuracy is not high enough. It's just a janky game. I'm serious, the Elder Scrolls 4 and Elder Scrolls Skyrim were much more refined games. Whereas this game right here is just a, a very, very... It's just a very, very difficult game to go back to because... The... Because it suffers with some antiquated features that have not been kind to it over the years. Like, I'm sure this game was fine on PC at the time, but on the Xbox, it's just, a, a, it's just worse in every single way. On top of that, it has some frame rate problems. Like, it's mild stuttering. And the low types are a bit horrendous. But at least this game of the year edition comes with two expansion packs. Blood Moon and Tribunal. Yeah, and this got ra and this was ranked RPG of the year, game of the year. This Oh, oh, this game was so amazing at that time. Yeah. Power to people who like this game, but playing it now, it's just a mess. Still, it's right here in my collection. I may play it. Sometime. Perhaps. Alright. Now we got some Game Boy Advance games now. So let's see what Game Boy Advance games I picked up. And these are... First one... NES Classic Bomberman. This is the original Bomberman game that came out for the NES, for the NES. NES Classics is basically just a... Um, a pack of re-release games that one that came out for the NES, 8-bit NES consoles, re-released for the Game Boy Advance. And there were about 12, 15 games, I think. I can't remember. I I have I have one of Dr. Mario and the Legend of Zelda games, so I think if we turn over, I think we have uh, Yeah, I have one of any NES classic Dr. Mario for the and get for the for the NES, which was yeah, which was on the NES, but there was one for the Game Boy as well. Then there was a Super Nintendo one of Dr. Mario. Which came with Tetra, which was part of Tetris and Dr. Mario. And then there's the two Zelda games as well. The original NES Zelda game and um, the sequel, Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. Which is one of the most difficult games ever made. And yeah, that's about it. Then I think there was one of Pac-Man. There was one of Super Mario Bros. There was one of Castlevania. NES, uh, NES Castlevania, then when there was one of Donkey Kong, um, then was one of Metroid, one of Excitebike, and one of Ice Climbers as well. Yeah, this is all I, that's all I remember. And this is one I have here of Classic Bo NES Bomberman. This one is a very difficult Bomberman game to go back to because it's hard. It's hard as hell to play. Like the enemies are very quick, very mobile and smart. 
and it and it's easy to die in this game. Like not a very easy Bomberman game to go back to. Whereas you got you have a Bomberman games, especially the modern ones, like Super Bomberman R, that are way be a way better games to play. The other ones I bought was Super Mario Advance. This was the only Super Mario Advance game that I didn't get. Like I got, like I had Super Mario Advance 2, which was um, a Game Boy Advance version of Super Mario um, World. Super Mario Advance 3 was one of Yoshi's Island. Was was the um, Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island, and Super Mario Advance 4 was when I'm based on Mario Bros. Super Mario Bros. 3, which was a hugely popular game on the NES back in the day, and this one is basically a version of Super Mario Bros. 2, which was, you know, the reworked uh, M Mario, which was a, a Japanese game reworked into a Mario game done on the NES, because, yeah, because you know, the real Super Mario Bros. 2 that came out on the Famicom in Japan only, um, was so difficult that they chose to take a different Japanese game and rework it into a Mario game. Yeah, that's 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 this game in a nutshell. Just a reskinned Japanese game. And it's pretty and it's a pretty fun game. It's got save features and it also features the um, the original arcade um, Mario Bros game that you could play. And they're pretty and they're pretty faithful games. I pretty faithful and I like that this game also has speech in it as well. And, it, and, it, and Mario Bros. 2 also features some graphical features that take advantage of the GBA's hardware. So, this was an early Game Boy Advance game as well. Really good one to show off the GBA. Then, then we got another good... Then we got another GBA game. And it is Stuntman. This was a game I'm sure people who are familiar with it back on the PlayStation 2. Where it was a game where you're, play, you're playing as a stunt map. And who, uh, who's dri who drives a car and who performs all various um, instructed um, stunts. And it's pretty decent. The Game Boy Advance version is very is faithful to that version in fact that it has some pretty pretty outstanding graphics for the top 3d graphic capabilities for the gba like it feels good the 3d feels good the 3d graphics on it are very fantastic so i think it has a very horrible 3d animated um human model you see when you start the game up and Yeah, it's yeah, it's truly a work. Yeah, it's truly a work of art. It's one you, it's one you want to see if you want to see like how impressive um, GBA graphics can be on the on the system. And then here, and then lastly, on the GBA, I have an RPG game that was heavily recommended by my nephews back a couple of years ago when I was playing some RPGs on the platform. And that is Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. A truly magnificently excellent turn based role playing game of the Mario and Luigi games. Where it has a fantastic battle system where you could do double damage if you time your hit, if you time. 
um, the button just as Mario or Luigi um, jump on the target. And also you can avoid taking damage by timing just as an enemy is about to hit you. Um, you press a button at a time to either, either dodge and evade. And it's actually a pretty clever system and it's actually worked in every Mario and Luigi game from this game and also the DS and 3DS entries. It's a shame the studio Alpha Dream I think it's called. I think that's the studio that worked on this game. It's a shame that Alpha, Sis Alpha Dreams got bankrupt and left gaming scene because these game, because these Mario and Luigi games are timeless and they are heavily recommended among um, GBA game collectors and you know Mario fans and they re it truly deserves praise praise it's one of the best ones for the GBA and I truly recommend it Now next we've got some DS games and I've got four with them and I got four right here. I have got Big Brain Academy. I actually have this game on the Nintendo Wii. I once saw this game on the Nintendo DS of my nephew's house. And I've seen that Big Brain Academy on the DS has some different mini games than what the Wii version has. The DS version is more educational aspect whereas the, um, the the Wii version has more mini game aspect to it. Like it's a pretty interesting um, entertainment game. One that's recommended for, D for, D for DS owners looking to get their brains going. Like it's not bad, it's a pretty good game. Good for the DS, good for kids, and good for families. Truly recommended. Alright, then these next two ones I have are Spectrobes and Spectros Beyond the Portal. These were very, very cheap RPGs I picked I found. And I believe there are RPGs. Like kind of. Where you you dig um, sites or something, you dig down um, like um, uh, on these gra on, on the ground. You dig stuff on the ground, and you find these like fossils or something that you um, try to extract without damaging them. But on this, on this original one, it takes a lot of time of getting used to. And then there's a and then there's a battle system where you um you where yourself and two of these spectro buddies that you have with you fight off against um enemies. An action oriented combat system system like it's all right, nothing too exceptional. For the D, for the system, but still, it's all right. I only picked this. I only picked the original out for two pounds. That's all super cheap it is. But the second one, it's supposed to follow up from the from the original game. But the second one, I have these um, special cards with it. I haven't really done anything with these cards, or what they're supposed to be, or what I'm supposed to be doing with them, or whatever. But uh, yeah, I just got them with the cards anyway. The second one, the first one I got didn't have any cards with it. it was the second one I did get some cards with it. Still, yeah, well, if you like RPGs, you gotta try this one out, maybe. And then lastly, I have the DS version of Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Chaos Fury, the third game in the Splinter Cell series. Where it's a game that takes advantage of the Nintendo DS's um, control scheme. 
where you use the stylus to um, move the camera and look around and also you do stealth stuff like you're covertly t silently taking down enemies and also doing your spy your crazy spy move stuff the DS version is supposed to follow it from the from the console version but the DS version I have heard is not that good and it does and while it does have a multiplayer it does require yeah multi cards where it's basically just either either one player plays as the um spy or the other player plays playing as the um mercenaries where it plays where that one changes up and plays in a first person perspective yeah it's the ds version but it's inferior because of the hardware yeah it's that and now we got one last thing to be, that needs to be done and that is the Christmas presents and that is I got some new games for the PS4 a new game for the DS and also a new controller with some bum grips so I'm going to put up the controller this is the Hori Hori pad FPS for control now what is it called uh, it's the Hori pad for FPS controller plus controller it's the Hori pad FPS controller I will say pretty awkward to say it but either way this is a very very unique um, controller for the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 I did try this on my PlayStation TV and hope um, it would work with the PlayStation TV also but no matter what I did it did not work with it like I tried every single setting on this controller like nothing happened but alas this is a very good um, controller that allows me to utilize turbo functionality like if I'm playing along with an RPG that with unskippable dialogue I have to hold down the turbo button to just to skip past everything or if I want to play an FPS game like Battlefield and the game completely switches the, um, the aim down sight buttons and the firing buttons like on the wrong buttons like if R1 is the fire button and the L1 is the using the um, the aim down sight button I can use this assign button here to assign the R1 button onto the L2 and then L2 R2 onto R1 yeah it essentially allows me to swip, swap the buttons around make them do what I want and there's also a target button right here where it slows the right analog stick down so like if you're trying to get a a perfect shot on your enemies then then yeah it's it's a good one it's a good controller to have it also has a functioning um, touchpad and of course all your other buttons work work fun work work well and yeah I've been using it for a fair amount of quickly for good games on my ps3 and ps4 I've mostly just been using it on my ps4 at the moment like I'll, I'll actually put it on my PS3 um, when I'm ready 
when I want to play um, shooters on the PS3. But alas, it's a fantastic one, and I really do recommend it. Only problem though, it, this is a Japanese only um, game controller. And the only way you're going to ever find this is if you look on Amazon. I, we actually got this off Amazon for £50. And if you can get it for that much or 40 it's truly recommended. And I'm truly, and I think the £50 does justify it considering the features it has. And well, the only features it's missing is the headphone jack for your microphone. And that's the only consequence it has missing. But anyway, I like it. It's a truly fantastic um, piece of gaming kit. Truly recommended. And now next, I have a DS game for Christmas, and it is Cowbellas Dream Dangerous Hunt 2011. This is the Nintendo DS version of a console arcade hunting simulator that was on the PlayStation 3 and the Nintendo Wii as well as the Xbox 360 where it came with a special gun a special light gun controller that you use for hunting down that you use for playing the game with and it comprised of simple first person shooter hunts where you hunted down dangerous animals that are out to try and kill you. And then there's also an on rails um, shooter segment where it plays kind of like a light gun game. Like in the arcades. Where you're shooting down um, hostile um, enemies that are trying to get you. The DS version follows it from that aspect. Where it has um, the stylus touchscreen aiming. For um, shooting down beasts that are trying to attack you. Yeah, it's alright. If not, nothing too exceptional. This DS version, however, it only ever came out in the United States. There's no release of this DS, DS version in Europe. Whereas the console versions came out worldwide. Both the US and Europe. And so, oh, yeah, I got myself a rare DS car copy of it. I'm pretty good, and in pretty good shape as well. Really like it as well. Yeah, so, not a bad DS game to play. I only played it once, so it's, eh, nothing too bad or awful. Alright, then we got the next game, which is going, which is... So whatever series I've been kind of following and get, wanting to try and get into, and it is Neptunia Sisters vs Sisters. This is the latest game in the Nep in the Neptunia in the Neptunia series, where where this game follows the CPU candidates, the sisters of the main goddesses, but with uh, focusing on Neptunia as the protagonist who was also the protagonist in the second Neptunia game. Mm. The first time I looked at this game I thought it was going to be a full on remake of the second um, Neptunia game because uh, Idea Factory did do a remake of the first um, Neptunia game for the PlayStation 5, Neptunia Reburst. Re Neptunia Reverse, that's it. Um, and I thought this was going to be perhaps Neptunia Reverse 2 because they might as well do um, a trilogy of Reverse games for the new um, PlayStation 5 console. But instead what this game is is a spin-off game and Neptunia has been pretty much been in spin-off purgatory since after um, Mega Dimension Neptunia V2, which was the fourth game, fourth mainline game in the series, which launched back in, was it 2015 or was it 2016? I cannot remember. 
2015 for the PlayStation 4. I I don't remember. I don't remember. But anyway, this game takes place um, in a game industry two years in the future where after an encounter with a Ashen Goddess, uh, Nepgear, Uni, and Ramen Ram wake up to, it wake up after they got put to sleep um and um oh, and everybody you and everybody on the game am I, and everybody in the world uses an, an uh, uh, what's called an r phone which is a reference to um iphone iphone ios devices which makes monsters spawn around and the candidates have to go in and not only take out the mo not only deal with the monster threat that's happening throughout game industry, but also um, to find Neptune, who has gone missing. Who has gone missing? I only played the first like hour of it, like just just to see the sto the story of the game, and also to get some wild based achievements, and also to get a recording of the get. Um, a rec recording of the game for my um, Hori FPS controller um, first session gameplay impression and also just to get one of the achievements out of the way that I wanted so yeah it's alright it's a pretty good game just the action orientated combat system is something I need to get a little bit of an understanding of but once I really get into this game I'll I'll get I'll get a fist I'll get an understanding of it and I did pick up the standard edition because I wanted the game itself and getting the calendar edition was pointless because the calendar it comes with is only the 2023 version and yeah it's pretty fine I have heard now that there, that there was also recently the Nintendo Switch version that was coming out that has come out, and I have also heard that they've patched the game, um, which now censors some of the dialogue in the game. And I and all I need to say is that is stupid and pointless because why would you need to censor any of the dialogue in this game? Like the content is pretty much what you would expect for a 12 plus rated game like you're expecting bad language you're expecting um, IF and Blanc to be you know character characters who will constantly who, who spew out profanity let's not forget though that in Super Dimension Neptune vs Sega Hard Girls there was a funny bit of dialogue where IF snaps at Eastwar, the, uh, what was it, the smaller Eastwar from the Ultra Dimension, was it, the Ultra Dimension Eastwar? Yeah, the Ultra Dimension Eastwar messes around with IF's bike without IF's permission and IF gets super pissed at Eastwar because she touched a bike without her permission by swearing at by almost swearing at her and it censors it like it that's the funniest bit of dialogue in Neptunia hist history so for this game to completely censor the dialogue stupid that is stupid only because the rating systems did not point out the the bad language out and said that they wanted to cut keep the game's rating low oh like come on that is ridiculous and it's not the same situation as Tales of Bazeria like they had a reason to censor the game to try and keep the rating low this is just something that the rating system's completely fucked up on. And I hope they never do that again with um, the, the, the next Neptunia game that's coming, I, that is going to come out in 2024 in English. Um, oh, what was that Neptunia game called? Um, 
Neptunia Game Maker Revolution. I think that's what it's called. Neptunia Game Maker Revolution. Which is going to come out soon in 2024. Um, we'll have... Will come out in English. And I should mention that this game is going to come out... Um, that recently came out for the Nintendo Switch. And it's going to soon come out on the... Xbox consoles for the first time, making it the first Neptunia game to be multi-platform. So good on you, Neptunia! You're you're doing you're doing you're doing yourself proud. And I can say that this game is pretty proud because the way the graphics of this game really look, especially when you do get the opportunity to explore around Planetune. And even go inside um, the Planetune um, Basilicom for the first time. Like it's actually really impressive stuff. And they actually managed to make it run impressively on the PS5. Like I'm actually impressed. So I hope they expand upon the ideas of the of Neptunia Sisters vs Sisters for future Neptunia games. So it's a good step forward. Alright, now here's the last game to talk about, and it is... Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, the 2023 edition. Where do I fucking begin with this one? Where do I begin with this one? How about a little story I had getting this? I did get the I asked for this game for Christmas, I got it. But I didn't get the PS4 version. I had the PS5 version of this. We accidentally got the wrong version of the game. And we had to order the correct version of this game. And we eventually got it and it arrived like two days later. And, and because of that I had to delay this Christmas video. Just because I wanted to wait for the game to arrive before I eventually started opening my presents. Yeah, I know, it was late and it was kind of a stupid idea, but I had no choice. It was either that or I was going to... Or there wouldn't be any kind of video at all. Or otherwise, if I, otherwise if I opened up my presents now and played on them, yeah and did a video on it, I would have to do a separate video with for um, Modern Warfare 3 for the PS4 and it would have just increased my, my work time. Yeah, I didn't want to do that, so I had to take the shortcut and just... and yeah, just do it this way. And just wait until I got it. And I did, and I did get it. It works, it works, it works fine. And it's even got the code for the PS5 version when I'm ready to put it in. But either way, this is a Call of Duty game that's not very good. The campaign is embarrassingly short. Like, super short. It's absolutely very bad. Like, some missions of it may be fine, but it recy- But then it, it- But it has various assets that are recycled from Call of Duty Warzone. And it has maps that are recycled from the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 2009 game. And and then it has the zombies which I think people may actually like but it's still not that great. And wait a minute, zombies in a Call of Duty Modern Warfare game? What? Yeah, not a very good Call of Duty entry, and it's actually a pretty embarrassing one. And this was from Sledgehammer. I'm not joke. I'm not even joking. Sledgehammer. The same guys that worked on the Van Call of Duty Vanguard, which came out two years prior to this. And that one was way better than this. I'm not even joking. 
like it's a very shameful Call of Duty game. And for 20 years, this is imp and after and among the 20 year anniversary for Call of Duty series is going, this is an embarrassment, like truly embarrassing. So this is all my games I bought throughout 2023. So not a bad haul, including all the games I bought for Christmas. Oh yeah, I need to talk about these bum grips. These are the CQC. Can't see them very well, but these thumb grips right here are the CQC. Right, I'll show you. I'll show you what this looks like. These are the CQC X performance thumb grips from Control Freak. These are actually super comfortable arm um, grips. Like they're very small. Like you can squeeze these onto a thumb grip or onto your controller's thumb grips on either your PS4 or PS5 controller. And these these cover up and you can put your thumb onto them and they feel really really good. They may have some tiny spots on them, but don't worry, that doesn't take off for the how super comfortable your thumb feels when you move it when you press it on on pressing on that these may cut they may be expensive like they cost it uh, like 20 for 21 pounds but for what they will for, but, for, but for what they are worth they are super comfortable and I actually did do feel that these thumb grips are the way to go I have, ten, I have played around with these number, number, numerous amount of thumb grips, but these feel feel great. These are the best ones I've actually found. I actually really, really like these. And if you want thumb grips, get the CQC X um, performance thumb grips version. Version you won't be disappointed. So that's all I got for um, this um, this this December. Pretty good stuff. Uh, so, 2023 is about to end. What a year 2023 has become. And I had a bit of mixed feelings over this year. Like, the events of 2023 weren't bad. My life in 2023 wasn't too great. Aside from moving to a new house. But everything could have been so much better. Even especially with the moving house situation. Everything could have been done better. But I think everything really did not great go as go as what I hoped. Everything didn't go as well as I could have could have done it. But what can you do? I may be living in a smaller room, but either way, I'm still surviving. And I'm lasting pretty well. But I finally get to go out again, at least. I get to go out and buy stuff. And I've got a new set goal. Getting stuff for, for my new Game Boy Advance console. I want to get some accessories for this GBA console and get it ready for gaming and get it ready to be my next um, handheld device for gaming because I want to get the the battery hand grip for it I want to get the screen um, a new screen um, magnifier for it or something to light up the screen or make it uh, backlit or something and then um, and then there's, get, then there's getting the battery grip obviously to make it so that I can charge it every time I want to go on it yeah so that's gonna be my that's gonna be my first goal get the Game Boy Advance accessories that I want for it there's anything to replace this thing right here where the bits holding it are snapped off and I may have to think about getting a new one 
I boosted on a fair amount of multiplayer games. Like this year I've been focusing a lot on the multiplayer games and I really think I should take a break from boosting um, online games and do something different. Like I may consider going back to RPGs because Tales of Arise recently released the um, the DLC, the Beyond the Dawn DLC and I need to consider going back to that game, going back to it. And actually start going through it and then play and then reviewing it and then going back to the Tales of Symphonia remaster playthrough which I've had on hiatus for a very very long time because I did not go back to finish because I've had all the um, house moving issues and various multiplayer games that I was playing that I was boosting on at the time. So, yeah. And on top of that, there's the Final Fantasy games I want to play as well. I want to play some of the final, some more Final Fantasy games. I want to do Final Fantasy VIII Remaster. I want to do Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origins. Next, after. Yeah, so I'm going to be having, I want to have a bit of a break from First person shooters and other kind of games because I want to do um, some other shit as well. Like, I'll, and I may consider um, stopping Splitgate for real if I really need to push um, towards um, getting stuff done. Like I'll make it like I'll make continue to play Splitgate daily, which is what I'm doing. I'm only playing Splitgate da daily just to unlock skins for my character. Yeah. But other than that, I do have other things I do need to really want to get on with. So yeah. And as far as other reviews going, and as far as my game review plans are going, I have the top 10 um, Game of the Year um, vlogs I'm working on. I'm working on the worst games of 2023 vlog um, in progress. And once that's done, I'll eventually um, do one on the most disappointing. And once that's that also done, I'll work on the best games of 2023. And then I'll eventually start um, resuming back to my standard uh, schedule of picking out a game to review, which I'll do a review on next on my GameSpot channel. So yeah, I'm going to be keeping my, I'm going to try and keep myself busy in 2024 as well as making, as well as making a bit of clean up on my computer. So I've got a bunch of crap -y images and shit on my computer that I think I should really get rid of. I wouldn't mind getting rid of. But I'll eventually start, but I'll eventually start that sometime. But the game review projects and top 10 related stuff is going to be my number one priority first. Like all the top 10 stuff that I normally do is my next priority. My next priority. And as for trying other new stuff, I have no idea. I'm not sure what new stuff I'm going to think about doing. But it's getting my channel up. Um, it's getting my GameSpot channel back up to stuff is more or less um, my goal. And then changing up my my Facebook and YouTube channels, imagery icons, 
um, could be my next, is going to be one of my other top priorities. So I'm going to change up my icons because my icon that I use for, is from um, Adventure Quest Worlds, and I rarely ever go and I rarely ever play that game anymore. And I may want to change it up with something that I think would look cool for my back as a background. So that's gonna be my new year. So that's gonna be one of my new year, possibly one of my new year's resolutions. So one of my new year. So here, those are my new year's resolutions that I'm gonna be that I'm gonna be focusing towards. Number one, possibly playing and reviewing RPGs again because I want to go back to those because I've boosted a lot because I boosted too much in multiplayer games. Um, I'm playing a but I'm playing um, split gate a little bit too much and second getting um, some new stuff for the Game Boy Advance some Game Boy Advance accessories I want to really get some Game Boy Advance accessories done for it I want for it and changing up my um, my YouTube, Facebook, and GameSpot channel icons to make them look much more better than what I hope, than what I would like them to be. So those are my New Year's resolutions that I want. So that is going to do it for my games I bought video and plus my New Year's resolution. I hope you guys enjoy yourselves in um, 2023. I hope you guys enjoyed some seeing some of my content for our 2023. I tried my hardest to um, put up some videos and gameplay clips of the games I play and some of the multiplayer games I played for our um, 2023, namely um, the Paladins and. Gundam Evolution that I'm still gutted that it died that that game died out and any of the multiplayer games that you've boosted with me on and it's been a great it's been a an emotional year and we're hoping to do all of this again in 2024. So this is going to do it for me, but the year of 2023. I hope to see you all again in 2024. And I'm, and I can, and I'm gonna wish you all a happy new year see you all again in 2024 where we will start some new projects new adventures and new um ways of entertaining each other so take care of yourselves drink some beers and other kinds of beverages that you like and see you all again in 2024 so, take care of yourselves. Happy New Year to everyone. See you all in 2024.